Ladies, hello there. And gentlemen, hello there as well. See, I didn't forget the ladies this time, Rank. Oh, shush. See, I didn't forget the ladies. Katie. But yes, uh, we're going to be seeing the Team Bazaar versus the Moxies. Or should I say Moxies versus Team Bazaar, because that's the way Chaos versus Order is going to be aligned. Now, most people would say, what's the point of having that differential? Well, there are some slight differences in map design. Like, for instance, you can get to red buff, I believe, slightly quicker on Chaos side, but you can get to lane quicker on the duo side on, with the Order. I think it was something like that. As we see Ymir get banned out by Moxies. Yep, so Ymir and Song Wukong taken off the table. Team Bazaar played that to absolute perfection. Dark UDK, really, really good job. Got a lot of XP online, got very tanky naturally from his base stats on the god. Scaling on Ymir is just, he's the highest level 20 health in the game, I'm pretty sure. So it's just like, poof, suddenly you've got this lace game Shuja's beast in front of you. And then he's got items in on top of that as well, and there's not a huge deal you can do. And and the amount of CC that Dark ADK was able to put out in nice ultimates, he was just in the middle of the team fights. He was doing exactly as he was needed to in that last game. It worked to perfection. Good idea to bend it away. So Ket and uh, obviously, uh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Gee, I'm just oh, having fine. some trouble with my words today. <laughs> it's so late. It's the end of the day. It's been hype. We're both better now. It's 4 a.m. here. I tell you what. But, oh, Jesus Christ, 4 a.m. Right, yes, moving into the game, we are going to be seeing the Circuit ban. That's going to be a good bit of anti-heal chunk and chunking taken out off the field. But speaking of chunking, Bellona and Thor get laid down there for Team Moxie. Oh, sorry, Team Bazaar, excuse me. And Athena and Yanis, yes, they're both on... Ah, never mind, but the words are out of the mouth. If we are expecting a Neath, that's triple global, and they do pick the Neath. So... Immediately, Moxies have huge map presence. Isis is going to be the counter pick coming through from that one, looking towards Team Bazaar. But I mean, Globals—they've got so much pressure right here. Moxies as well love to give Ducky a Fenrir pick going over towards that solo lane. Can put a lot of aggression down, but it's into a Bologna, and I really prefer the Bologna. She can just slap him back in the face, and well. Team Bazaar, banning away Fenris, say, all right, you can't do it. A lot of globals don't want to let it get through. And I, I trust that, Ben. I'm Ares. happy with that. That's an Ares ban coming out. I'm going to guess that either Moxies know something about Team Bazaar, or Moxies are going to be pulling out two very mobility-heavy gods in a moment. That's telling when an Ares gets banned. I mean, you could ban a lot of different people. You could ban Gebs, you could ban Sylvanas, but an Ares? That tips your hand slightly. So, I mean, look what are at they their combats left, right? What's the most impactful choice that they can take from Hunter and Support? I'm going to yeah. lean towards the Ares as well, like, especially with Ymir already taken off the table. Yeah, sure, Geb's already up. Uh, I mean, you've also got Athena as well. Athena doesn't do great into an Ares because preemptive strikes, she can't get in. If she's ever crippled up and the and the damage that comes down, it's just insane. So it's just like, all right, it's a problem pick for us. We'll handle it. We'll get out. So who's going to be the support for Team Bizarre? I wonder. They have the Medusa. Who can they pick up here? I want to see how this is done on the opposite side of the board, and we are going to find out. Guan Yu is going to be hovered over here and locked in for Moxies and the Hunbats as well. That's going to be the full composition. The Guan Yu solo coming out today. Game Hunter started that, and it looks like we're going to be seeing that coming out of Moxies as well for the finals. This is best of one, by the way. A certain amount of teams triggers a threshold where finals go to from best of three to best of one, and we triggered that threshold long ago. I think we had like 25 teams signed up before even check-in started today. We've had a pretty bloody big turnout rank. And it hasn't been a phenomenal tournament as well. The amount of teams, big name teams that haven't really made the finals is is, is very indicative of, of the level of skill that's come out of here. Barkus. Barkus is in a weird place right now. I... I like... Well, first of all, let's get personal bias out of the way. I love seeing the fat man. But at the same time, he's very manner-intensive, even with the buffs he had recently to... 
the way his burp works, so it knocks back minions, so he can clear a little better, he can do this and that a little better, but he's literally drinking his mana away, and in a lane going up against what I would assume is going to be Athena Neath, that's going to be a problem in terms of getting poked too much and sustaining long enough to well, get enough XP. So, either way, the Bacchus, at least immediately, is going to be in for a rough time early, but come late game, he's able to leap over Etiske on the Athena, sorry, excuse me, Jacob HL on the Athena, and then just start bashing people's brazen with his stick of meat, and occasionally a massive ultimate. The question is, do you think he's going to build Soul Reaver Bacchus last item? Most Bacchus, this is what I know, will usually build that last item, which is kind of cherry on top rank. It's a nice bit of burst. I, I, I don't quite mind it. It'll depend if he can get there. That's the problem. I'm not sure if this will actually go that late. But think of what they've got here. The Isis, early potential, big burst ultimate. Thor, early potential, big burst ultimate, a lot of potential for ganks. Bacchus provides that as well. Nice amount of dank, danks, uh, <laughs> ganks he is so good at. Intoxicate works potentially very, very well for that. They've, they've got a lot of ability to make some really, really high damage early stuff go on, especially towards the left-hand side of the map, especially towards that mid lane as well. So, I don't know. I think it's going to be all down to what really happens in that early game and whether they can get uh, get Isis Medusa really rolling. Now, one final question before we cut to the 90-second anti-ghost timer. Early game is going to be up in the app. Team Bazaar, they in theory have a better early game. They've got the belly flop damage early, they've got the four ganks early, as long as Moxie forgets to ward correctly. We'll see what happened before, last time we saw the Thought Jungle, and he just wrecks people. But at the same time, Moxies have decent early game as well, with Guan Yu, Hun Bats, and to an extent the Athena. So, can are you going to give anyone an advantage in terms of early game, or... Are you going to be like I am and just kind of shut up and let this play? Because I, I think I, I want to really shut up and let this play. Yeah, I can't give anyone an advantage here. I mean, I can. It's slightly in favor of Team Bazaar, but it's down to whether they land their combos, right? If they land a double tap from Thor, if they land a spirit ball into a big ultimate combo coming through from Isis, Wing Gusts as well. It's all down to that. Especially if Medusa can find a really, really nice Petrify. That's so much damage. They have so much potential, so I slightly lean towards Team Bazaar in that, but they are so skill shot and big skill... Like, it, it is just on in their skill shots. You know, the skill shots coming through from Moxies are a lot easier to hit, but they don't do quite as much damage earlier on, so it's up to Team Bazaar, I think, to get a little bit more snowball going. This, ladies and gents, will be right back with the grand finals. This is going to be Moxies versus Team Bazaar on Spike Game 2. This is your EU Challenger Cup. Be right back. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. It's now time for the grand finals between Moxies and Team Bazaar. I'm Verbalosti here with Mr. Ranconius. Rank, my friend, it's late in the day and late in the tournament. But this match may wake us up because but we haven't seen Moxies on the stream, but Team Bazaar... I've certainly given us some bloody good matches. And some stuff to talk about as well. It's been high-intensity, high-powered games coming through from them. We haven't really seen them take a backward step. They always want to be pressing on the offensive and uh, be rather aggressive. And this comp just scree excuse me, once again screams that at us. Yeah. Speaking of comps, let's actually go over that. So Team Bazaar will be coming down from the north on the Chaos side of things in the Red Trunks. We have Ayers on the Isis mid... Axios on the, the solo Bologna, Dokyo DK on the jungle, Thor better than Ayers on the Medusa once again, and Etiske teaming up with him on the Bacchus. Let's have a look at their opponents here. Oh no. Bologna Thor might go for a steal? No, they're gonna leech the camp instead. Red Pot is gonna get popped. But. Double Red Pot? Double Red Pot. Double Red Pot. They want the invade. And they may have to actually give it up here. They know. They saw the red pop pop. There's not a lot they can do. Yanis can't really rotate either to help as well. Yeah, they're just going to give that up. That that sucks for Moxies, but that's a great game for Bizarre. And it's interesting to note here as well that um, Axios actually leveled the, the shield smash first. Just to make sure that he could get up slow and get multiple thwacks onto his opponents. Look at the left side mid camps though. Aeos is looking for the spirit ball, gets it onto both of them. They only get one harpy and then they're forced to back up because 
Level one on Flurry Q. And he's already half health. AOS as well. Oh, half no. health. Oh. Look at the right side. Because Flurry Q went to go with the mids, the blue buff for Guan Yu wasn't available. So Ducky is now Sans a jungler and Sans blue buff. This is a brilliant start for Below the Thor. And he might continue to be sons of jungler as Dark UDK went a long way forward there. Wolfie gonna not eat the damage. It'll be Flurry Q that does so, but Aeos is incredibly low now. He's got to be careful because if he lands a Spirit Ball, they need to be able to follow up. And with the current health bars they have, they really can't. Yeah, that the amount of just raw poke over a wall Isis can do with that. The, the four... Oh my god. No, not Spirit Ball. The Wing Gust. There we go. Oh my god, it's late. What are we doing? Yes, the wing gusts. It gives you enough power as to where you're always paranoid in mid lane as a Yan as to where do I burn the portal to guarantee the harpies or do I burn it? He might burn it for his death here as Dark Yodk spins around and around and around and around and around and picks up the first foot there on the Yanis. Yeah, successful constant pressure in and around that mid lane. That's the red pot start coming through. Of course, only boots coming through at this stage from uh, Flurry Q's Hunbarts. Looking potentially if we the camp still now, they'll get the secure on the right hand side for Team Bazaar. But that's the start, right? It's it's boots versus the red pot. The red pot's so effective in this early game. They got the XP steal on the buffs. Now look at Axios. Axios already level five, only level four from Ducky. And he's got another mana buff. This is gonna be a permanent mana buff in this lane if he steals every single one of the opposing numbers blue. Yeah. Duo as well. Edenscape just took a lot of poke from the combined forces of Jacob and Zigox. Better than Ayers was firing back, but this is the problem that Bacchus has. He's aggressive and therefore has to pay the price of aggressive positioning in that if you're going to go for the watches to eat your farm up, you don't have the Mark of the Vanguard to suppress the damage, you're going to be sitting at around half health for most of the laning phase. Check out the level advantage on the right. This is without a death. There was two levels there just a second ago. Ducky finally going to hit that level 5 point and finally get some more online for himself. But he's not doing very well. Hunbots needs to do a bit of camping for him. Now, it looks like possible deja vu here if the Spirit Ball hits and it won't. But if it did hit, we would have had deja vu and Ducky the game might have come for a second sure. kill. But right now, they're going to take that first blood advantage they have, try and keep Wolfie down. Because out of everyone on Team Moxie, the Yanis is oh, the Dark one Yodike who really has got oh. Wolfie. Wolfie's in a lot of trouble right now. There's the wall to wall him off from getting underneath his own tower room. And the mid lane are just around the corner to back him up. They had to be super careful. Did so. No kill on towards Wolfie this time around, but he's got no mana and he has to bait. As I was saying... You have to keep the Yanis down, and apparently Team Bazaar agree with me. But hello, the War on Bats? No, nothing's gonna happen there, Rank. Ducky loses second blue buff as well as Dark UDK throws the hammer to get the heck out of there. Not gonna lose the speed, I hope, this time through. Should be able to secure that one up for Flurry Q to get him his first buff. Yeah. A jungler without a speed is not the greatest thing in the world. Actually, it's not even just the greatest thing. It's a massive disparity that you don't want to deal with because if you can't rotate as quick, can't reposition as quickly, you can't go for any kind of cheeky flanks because the enemy team knows for a fact what your movement speed is going to be. Because most junglers have fairly similar movements. It's not like AD carries or Guardians where the movement speeds can be anything from one of the fastest in the game to one of the slowest in the game in the case of all. So... If a jungler doesn't have a speed buff, that's just a massive detriment, not even to mention the golden XP disparity. Actually, it's probably a good point to point that out already. XP is fairly level, but already a thousand gold building up in favor of Team Bazaar. Constant blue buffs on the right hand side of things for Axios, and he's making opposite number pay for that. Guan's only got a really big early game, and then he kind of falls off for a long period as he just tries to build up and get tanky. Yeah. He's going to be able to, once he gets tankiness online, just run a riot. But for now, that isn't the case. Uh, ooh, a little bit of Archie Barge over in the door. I wonder if that's actually a thing, but we see it's confirmed as we saw the ultimate being deployed by Ediske. Maybe Thorolt. Yes, the Thorolt dark goes up. They might go Flurry. He doesn't get it. 
Yeah, no stuns whatsoever. No wall stun, no slam down stun, nothing confirmed there for Dark ODK, but what it has done is put a lot of pressure under the health bars and Moxies. Now they might get on towards the Gold Fury. They can confirm this nice early lead for Bazaar, but they're going to get four. Yep, down goes the Fear. No evil going to try and separate people away from the Gold Fury while keeping at least for a few, picking up the first kill onto Dark ODK for the team. Down a couple. I was say would have been down covers, but no gets taken out. Wolfie picks up LSK as well in the process. That's gonna be a two for one trade. Axios is here. He drops uh, the Eagles while oh! trying to get in there. Portal is the crucial factor, but now look at Ayers. Ayers is in trouble trying to use the wing gust. Does nice. manage to secure it with his AD carry and kill off, but now look at Guan Yu. Ducky's rotated over. Will stop the Gold Fury from being done, but he's too late to have any influence on the fight. Yeah, that is... I'm surprised Ayers managed to live through that. He was about maybe he was about an old attack away from death. He was 150 health. He was dead to rights there. The fact that he lived through that is surprising. Body blocks, man. Body blocks. We have body seen some pretty... We have seen some smart body blocking all day. From even the very first match of the day, it was um orcs versus oh what is, was it bizarre. Or was it Probably someone, actually was, bizarre. It, it, it was Orcs versus uh, someone. There was some pretty smart body blocking around the Fire Giant here. Oh, looks like Axios is going to get punished for the lazy back here by Bluestone Swanee with the Aetherization. Out comes the Glorious Horse, and down goes the lazy backer. That is why you do not lazy black. Because that happens. It's not fun. It's not fun dying, especially when it's all your fault. It was Orcs versus Netflix and chill. I just found it on the Blackheads. There we go. Orcs versus Netflix and chill. There was some pretty good body blocking in that match. There was body blocking, I know, that I can remember in the third match there as well. Just in general, body blocking and fighting but not getting the goal three, I think you've seen all throughout today. But it looks like Wolfie going through time in space for the rotation onto duo lane here. But did they get it right? No, a taxi tried to dump everything down on towards Zegox, but Zegox lives a little while longer and they, and they get the dot damage, not quite able to. Zegox lives this time with the sliver of health. A taxi's gonna find. Sorry, not a taxi, it's gonna be Jacob HL that actually finds AOs towards the mid side of this one, and unfortunately for them, Bizarre lose two kills. Yeah, that is gonna be a two for nothing. Mid Harpies are also gonna be grabbed for Moxie, but. Hopefully, Axios is going to be able to grab the right side. Yeah, he will. He's going to be able to supplement his farm income. So, let's have a look at the builds. So, it, Duckley opting to go for the strategy saying, Hey, my abilities do enough damage. I don't need to worry about Mystical. He's going to go for the Breastplate of Valor to give himself more mana, give himself more cooldowns, while still providing the protections. While Axios is going to be going for the Mystical Mail, he has... Or at least most likely mystical, because I that's Iron Mail that builds into it. And the only real auto-attack threat that he has into his lane fre frequently is Flurry Q. So I imagine that's gonna be the mystical mail, not something like say a Hydra than Demi Line or a Mid Guardian. But you never know, I've been wrong in the past, Frank. You've seen sh yeah, shenanigans occasionally from time to time happen. I don't expect it here. I mean mystical mail just makes so much sense, right? Yeah, it would make the most sense in terms of clear. It would help Bologna out in terms of the bludgeon. There's no way for Guan Yu to interrupt without ult. So you won't see any shenanigans there. If it was like a Hades or something, I would expect maybe a B to come out a little bit quicker than it already has. Axios only has level 1. So she's not too concerned. She only wants it as basic protections against the entirety of Moxies. And for now, things just kind of die down a little bit. There's Argy Bargy in the solo, but that's solo antics. Things seem to have kind of mellowed out. Although I might have eaten my words at the duo lane here. Maybe a dead airs. Maybe a dead oh. airs. Better than airs indeed. He's going to go down to Ziggox. as unravel. Secures him off. Thor's going to slam down though. Ziggox is in a lot of trouble. That intoxicate really ripping into shreds. And now with the damage from Dark ODK and the beads to make sure he doesn't get snares up. Gets the kill. The double tap successful onto Jacob HL. And look at the burp. It's doing a lot of damage on towards Jacob. The wall's in a nice place to try and get Dark ODK out of here. But he wanted to go back in. Oh, he went no. for Jacob HL. Didn't quite secure him off. And Darkseid might jump on him though. Yeah, Paloma is going to be looking for it. Axios is going to pick up Jacob. Wolfie forced the portal out of there. That is going to be a pretty damn good trade. 
overall for what well, was actually not a good trade. It was an average trade for Moxies. Because yes, they got ganked on, they lost two people, but the bizarre team lost two people and they couldn't go for a gold fury because of that. And now more fighting happening in the duo lane. Ducky versus Axos with an incoming Flurry Q. Yeah, Flurry Q and certainly incoming, but it's the Zegox ultimate from downtown that is gonna steal that one away. Ducky in a little bit of trouble this time around, but not quite able to do it, unfortunately. And that'll be the end of that chapter. So I wanted to point out two things that happened in that fight. One on, we saw Floriku actually ambushing, I believe that was Ayers up at the top there in his own tower. And two, nice shot by Wolfie, throwing through time and space across the map and actually tagging Dark ODK for a pretty damn good amount of damage. Or I think it was actually Axios for a good amount of damage. Nonetheless, more fighting as Ducky picks up Ayers. Girl Fury is being semi-contested, but Doxy's going to rotate targets to try and keep out the enemy carry. And now they're going to be setting their sights on trying to secure the Gulf Fury as a game pause comes out. They are pushing pause time here. This will be the last pause for Team Bazaar. So if, if anything further goes wrong for them, unfortunately, that's just the way it is. And the reasons why... This has actually come up a lot recently in the SPL and whatnot, is that there are two sets of responsibilities here. There's a responsibility to the audience. We have to push through this game. We have to broadcast it for you guys. So... We need to give you guys all the actions that happens all the time. But it's also, what happens if your enemy team, they're in the game. They're sitting there. They're locked in. They can't really do anything else until your player comes back. So if that sort of thing happens, three paws is kind of like, well, it's the best of both worlds. It's enough yeah. to say if anything goes wrong, hey, you're covered. You've got a little bit of pause time. You're able to use that one up. But... If it continues going wrong, well, there's a responsibility to your opponents. Hey, things things are obviously going on your end. You're supposed to protect yourself. Your hardware, um, your internet connection, everything like that. It's your responsibility to provide a stability of that sort of stuff to make sure that you can play at the highest level. If something goes wrong and it continually goes wrong, get a sub. Don't play like that. It's a responsibility to bring your best, best foot and put it forward and not uh, not provide something that might be unstable because your opponents, th otherwise they're going to sit here for an hour to play a 20 minute game. Yeah, and on pause though, luckily it's going to happen, no one DC'd. Boxies is going to be picking up the Gold Fury. And now Axios might be getting a little... No, he's going to be actually play smart. He's going to back off. mid harpies are under contention. Uh, did that go for Wolfie? I couldn't tell. Did Axios steal that? I don't it seems like a little bit that. of a spike directly in favor of Moxie, so... Yeah, they probably took that. But yes, for those of you who are wondering, this is going to be a best of one. It would be best of three. But because of the amount of teams we've had, that triggered a condition where, to in the interest of time, it goes down to best of one for the finals. If it was low amount of teams, but this first series of five weeks, it goes to usually best of three. But if enough people join because it's open bracket, it goes down to best of one. For those of you wondering. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's the fact that we hit a round of 64. As soon as we open up that round of 64, it's best of one grand finals. Again, same thing that happens in an SBL game when players DC and whatnot. It's to just keep things flowing through. You want to be able to say, hey, between X and X hours on a Sunday, on a Saturday, whatever, of a weekend, you guys are going to be playing in the Challenger Cup? Right, it's going to be done by him then. You know, at this point. Otherwise, you start to get out of control. And these guys are uh, playing a long day of games just as we're casting a long day of games. So they're mentally fatigued. They're a little bit oh, fatigued at this point right time. And Ducky's going to be a thing a little bit more than fatigued at this rate if he doesn't get out alive. But look, he's going to be able to dash his way. There's a through time in space being the point. He almost ends up flipping Axios, but he's going to be able to get away. Dark ODK is going to get swept up there by one use room. Nice stun into the ultimate there. Isis providing Axios with a little bit of breathing room and picks up the kill onto Ducky. Yeah, he just takes a nice bit of damage back in response from Wolfie. Wolfie might actually look to go back in on towards this one. He landed the portal there. They're going to look for the taunt. No, silenced out. Ayers has taken a lot of damage. He's really, really low here. So is Axios. No mana to speak of. Atax is on the backside, but Wolfie will at least find one. Atax is going to find the response kill. It's going to be a one-for-one -one trade, all things considered. Now, are they going to try and take the advantage and push, or are they going to play safe? Because they have pushing on, they have pushing power on left, they have pushing power on right. 
And Flaps middle, are gonna be a dive off. right on the bed of the oh, no. Killed off, flurry kill, dropped the ultimate, dived under the tower with his partner in crime in Zidox, and secure that one up. And well, play it safe, now they just dive a tower and get a kill. <laughs> Completely the opposite of what I was suggesting. Well, apparently, this is welcome to EU where the games don't matter and the meta is made up, apparently. I mean, let's be frank here, the amount of, like, I, the amount of times you see in the Spike Game channel, whatever, oh, you know, EU boring, the entirety of today, Frank, I'm not, I imagine you probably agree with me, it hasn't been boring at all. No, 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 this has been a heck of a lot more exciting than the NA stuff yesterday, there was a lot more stumps, a lot less to talk about during different periods of time, but there's always been action in this EU Cup, and I'm loving it, I'm absolutely loving it. Yeah, the fact that it, things don't get stale is always nice to have you... Occasionally, when it comes to things that are sub-SPL level, you do run into the issue of teams not knowing how to finish a game. We haven't really been seeing that too much, but it looks like more fighting in the middle here. We're going to be seeing that you can get dropped through a portal, tr pops the ultimate to get out, not before being healed by the Circle Protection. Down comes the Athena across the skies, but won't hit Ed's game, but down comes Dark Unity, and he teleports out. Fear no evil, he's going to drive the fat man into the wall, portal is deployed around, but Ayers, better than Ayers, I should say, actually finds Wolfie and takes him out, but not before the Holland Bats take it out. Barker's going to pick up Dark UK as well on the back line, and now Ayers on the Isis is the next target. Flurry Q might actually be in trouble, Dominion damage gets a heal from Ducky and will live through this one, Axios doesn't quite find any more damage on towards him, still trying to get that hammer slam, it's on a Jacob, will secure that kill off, can they turn and fight Ziggox? No, he's just a little bit too quick and too kiteable with a spirit arrow. Yeah, and with that, we're now going to be going into the charts here with a pretty big lead for Moxies, 5k XP and 2.8k gold. That's going to allow them to start thinking a little bit more long term in terms of objectives. The, the farming stage is pretty much over now. Big fighting is going to start happening all over the map. Fire Giant is now officially of the contention. Moxies have their core items online. They have their um, Ichabals, they have their Heart Ward, their Jotuns, their Mail of Renewals. They could consider a Fire Giant pretty seriously here. Team Bazaar. They do have levels on enough characters, the certain characters like Bologna and the Medusa to where they could try and contest, but the raw power coming out of Moxies with people like Yanis and Guan Yu and Athena with their initiation potential, that could allow them to cinch up objectives left, right, and center. But they've got the circle of protections, right? They can contest this gold fury. By hell, they oh, yeah. can contest this gold fury. Drop the circle of protections underneath it, fight on top of that thing. It's yours. Don't even think about fighting now. And Wilfie taking so much damage here. The wing gusts were doing a lot. Toxie wants to get on top of him. The fear no evil's in a really nice spot from Flurry Q. Ayers is sitting on that circle of protections. That means nothing with a spirit arrow and a crit to the face. Now Ziggox might get jumped on a Toxie. He's actually still trying to chase off Flurry Q. And so in the back line is Dark Yodi K. They've got to turn around and find somebody else and they turn immediately on a flurry. Yeah, Axios is going to take out Flurry Q. Dark UK is now under threat against Spirit Arrow. is going to be taken out by Ziggox. Down comes the Athena. Stiletto in excess game in the face. Wolf Weaver is not going to kill. But Ducky is probably going to pick that up with the use of the Talo Assault. He might now, die though. This this could be troubleistic. They don't actually land the Shield Slam onto him, but the Torn under better than Ayers. He might get burst out of here. He's got to be super careful. We'll get the dash out of the way. So at least some safety in that one, but they're going to try for the Gold Fury here with the two-man advantage. That's why I want to mention about the Circle of Protection, because Ayers isn't doing that. He's burning protection early. They don't have it here. They wish they did, because we're all fighting around Gold Fury as Moxies will grab that and possibly, and they, though no, guaranteed, will be grabbing Exeols as well. Nice spirit ball though by Ayers is going to be stopping any kind of momentum. Just non stop action in this game. Oh non stop my God. action! Blink into the taunt! They might get Ayers. Ayers dead. Dead! You're dead, son! But yes, Ayers hasn't had the chance to really go for a big wombo combo objective use of the circle protection because he's having to keep de he's having to defend himself constantly from these little skirmishes by Flora Q and by Ducky and by Wolfie's assisted oh portals. God. He hasn't just been able to. Check out the gold difference. It's suddenly just blown out of proportions. Experience has constantly ah. been going up as well, but the gold 
it is just spiked. 6k the advantage. What items are we getting online? Well, it's no more. It's too much of an advantage should just to, to be a couple of actives, maybe a few wards dotted here around the map. It's a few more than that. Book of Thoth finished. Second item coming through for Yannis, so his late game scaling is insane. Chronos Pen. I love that on Yannis as such a first item. It's a good all-round item. Cooldown reduction, nice amount of power, and the mana regeneration. It is just a phenomenal item to rush into, and it works so well with Yannis' kit. Yeah. Being able to keep up, I wouldn't really say the spam, keep up the excessive deployment of abilities. It allows you to transport people even quicker with Yannis with the portals. But right side, four man rotation onto Bologna. I feel this is less about the Bologna and more about the tower here. Because, let's be honest, it's a five man it's rotation Bologna to get away. The world, oh. oh my days, that's an extremely dead Bologna. But is Bologna really worth that five-man rotation? No. Is the towel worth it? Yes, they just had to dispose of the bouncer first. <laughs> I love that turn. She's the bouncer, especially when she dumps an Eagles Rally down on top of you. Kind of bounces down on top of you. Um, but anyway, Toxie might have been the one they wanted to keep out from getting into the club, and that's why they left Bologna to defend that tower. Yeah. yeah. Bolo Bologna can defend, but not against a five-man rotation. No. There's multiple lots between deployed. Better than Ayers might have to rotate here and look to, to really get in on towards this one. The Torn under Dark Yoni K jumping on the back line. Atoxy gets the Intoxicate on three. So the protections. Really, really good underneath that tower as well. Atoxy gets another stun under Wolfie. Almost here is the Medusa. Better than Ayers trying to decide which way he wants to go. They're going to have to be careful right now because they can really get a pick on the Better than Ayers. Yep, but speaking of Ayers, Ayers has been dropped there in second by Wolfie and the CC of Moxie. So FSK getting a big dose of damage coming in from the Unstable Vortex on top of that. Axios though picks up Jacob in the back line. Wolfie is going to find FSK with a nice use of the portal to allow him to get out of there. Ziggox will pick up Ezen Ayers. It's currently a 3 for 1 trade. Make that 4 for 1 in favor of Moxie's. The Siege crew is here. Make that the Deer side. And now they might be able to get a phoenix. If they rush no. this down, they could probably get a phoenix. They're gonna back, and they're gonna probably go for the fire giant. Phoenix, screw back not... If you're Ziggox, you're just gonna no. go onto it. No, Aes is up. Isis can single-handedly stop a phoenix push. So they're gonna teleport back in, and they're gonna go for the fire giant. And they're probably gonna get it at this rate. It's already below half health. There's there's nothing they can do. They don't. If you were Team Bazaar, would you think that they would have gone on towards the Fire Giant after that? I wouldn't have. Yeah, I, I would have thought Phoenix originally, but then I saw the Death Counters. Ayers was very close to being up, so just go back. And you think that was actually the smart, pl the safe play, but no, the safe play there was actually to the Fire Giant. Da -da -ba -da -ba I can't, I can't believe the... they just got that for free. I Like, Ayers should have surely, you you'd think, oh, uh, you know, might be going on... Mm, well, they took it. They took it quickly too. Anyway, it's gone. It is just. I didn't. I didn't think they'd be able to get that with just a couple members. That's crazy. Yeah, and with that buff now, they're prime position to knock down the mid and solo lane tier twos. And Moxies haven't even had a single tower knocked down on their end. Team Bazaar really need to grab something. Not even uh, the Gold Fury at this point may hold them back into this game because of the comeback mechanic that it gives. Just the raw XP. They need to get Ayers and Dark UDK back online because they are incredibly behind right now. Well, what can they do to get Dark UDK and Ayers back online? Is is there anything they can really do? Like better than Just Ayers Fury, is really. to carry they can't farm. They can't farm right now, so Gold Fury is their best bet for XP. Because the Gold Fury gets more XP the longer the game goes on. If they can repel this assault that's inevitably coming their way by a fire giant injected Moxies, grab the Gold Fury and push as hard as you can. Because fire giant's not even on. what they're injected with. Look at the the gold difference between the two teams as well. And the experience is just insane. They're starting to cap out on the side of Moxies and they're nowhere near that from the side of Team Bazaar. Looking for the ultimate combo, not quite able to land it. Jacob in the front line, so is Ducky. Ducky's low, so is Ayers. But Ayers has got the circle protections. Oh, it doesn't do much against Flurry Q though. Better than Ayers though, is going to pick up a kill. Ducky as well, picking up Darkyo DK. It's a 2 for one trade. Axios looking for Zegas, but... 
no, he gets rooted in place. Needs getting up by the skin of her dress. And he's going to pick up the Bologna for trouble. Moxie's with the beautiful re-rotation off of the fight. Wolfie picks up Edisuke. That's a 4 for 1. They're looking for the DS side. Ayo's needs to retreat now. The taunt is not going to connect. But they're going to go for the jugular here. This is most likely going to be GG unless Ayo's can pull something out of the back pocket. Nah. That Titan is just getting worked on. It's 2k. There's no one up to defend it. Bizarre, we're just never in that game at any point. Yeah, bizarre, bizarrely enough, despite a strong performance in the earlier games we saw them today, Moxie is, uh, just took one used brush and swept them aside. I have no idea what happened in that game, but Team Bizarre got completely worked past early game. Because Moxie's just had the raw presence. Admittedly, the Yanis helps that massively. Team Bazaar put up a hell of a fight in the earlier rounds, but I've got no idea what happened there, but they got pushed over. I mean, what well, else can we say? It's just nothing else to say. Compositionally, both teams were, were very sound. A lot of aggression to come through for the comp on the side of Bazaar, but they never got the aggression to translate into anything. 32 to 22... Uh, so, sorry, 32 to 12 kills, 20 difference on that behalf, 50 difference in the assists. And I think largely that's where it's coming from. Yeah. That assist gold adds up massively over time. And to be able to give that to people like Yanis, to people like Wong Yu, who can take that and then do actual gains with it, is not a laughing matter. Especially considering that a lot of the time in these fights, they didn't. Moxies didn't even have to force an objective, they could just stand around it and wait for the inevitable rotation by the enemy team, because they have to answer for it, and then they go in. It sucks that the SSK on the Bacchus was not able to get online, because it would have been really nice to see those big wombo combo initiations, you know, Thor dunk, Bacchus dunk, Bologna dunk, dunk 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 but we didn't see that, and, and you know, as much as it does sting, Team Bazaar did put up a grand performance throughout the entire tournament, just not in the match at the end. Yeah, absolutely not in the match at the end. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it. We come to the end of the second day of week one of the Challengers Cup. I tell you what, it has been one hell of a wild ride all along the way. Oh, Verbalosti, yeah. thank you for joining me. M Target was a part of the casting oh, crew yesterday. He's on our production today. Lord Wizkid, big shout out to that guy. He is always staying up, doing long nights, trying to get stuff done. He is just such a phenomenal participator in everything we do here. Tier Monster, that's who we've been doing all this for once again, of course. Don't forget, go and check over the Smite game stream. I believe uh, Fnatic um, might have just actually beaten out so ah. what was that? Sorry, what was that? M target? Ah, right. So for those of you wondering, it's currently uh, Fnatic Justice playing. So if you want to see that, head on over to Smite Game 1. Also, humongous thank you to my co-caster Rancor for staying up till 4 in the bloody morning to cast. And also casting yesterday as well. I do, I do love you, my American senpai. But yes, we're going to go now. Go over the SPL. Enjoy some more esports action. We've been Dear Monster here at the Challengers Week 1. We'll see you Week 2 for NA.